seven years old, it wouldn't be the first time that I would feel powerless to my own self, to my own body. As women, you don't just feel powerless over your body as a child, as a teenager, as an adult, but sometimes even as older women, even as married women, we still feel powerless over our bodies. In the workplace, at home, in public, and even in spaces like this, the first time that I actually encountered sexual assault, and I would call it rape because I'm not embarrassed about that anymore. Before, some years back, I used to be very embarrassed about saying it because in our community, it's sort of taboo to talk about something like that. It's taboo for anyone to come in front of you and say, oh yes, I have been assaulted before. It's not pretty. It's not for fans. It's not for attention. It's, it's not for anything, but it did happen to me. I was 12 years old at the time, and it was with somebody that I trusted. In Ghana here, when we were growing up, I knew that for a lot of sexual abuse teachings, uh, African mothers avoid that kind of conversations with um, their children, but I would note, I uh, hope that all women here would endeavor to teach their children about violence, especially because it's not at all stranger danger, because that was what I was told when I was growing up. If you go outside, make sure you wear a longer skirt, don't pass the alleyways, don't go to a dark corner, don't go into an uncompleted building. Every movie we saw, every time somebody was assaulted, it was in an uncompleted building, I, I, I remember. But you're wrong, it's happening in your homes. For me, it happened just about 500 meters from my home, which was my safe space. It wasn't meant to be somewhere, someone that I would trust would do something like that to me. Now, I wanted to go a bit into detail about how that happened, but I would, um, I would refrain from that because of the child here. However, it only lasted for to my memory for about a minute, but it was damaging for the rest of my life. And up until I found the courage to be able to do something about my story and my trauma. For about a decade, I certainly didn't know who I was. I didn't understand what worth was. I didn't understand what an identity was. I had so much memory repression the first guy who raped me will not be the only guy to assault me. And statistically, it's proven that, especially child, um, child uh, sexual abuse victims and even adult abuse victims will certainly go on in life and experience at least one or two forms more of abuse. And so when other people, other men, older men who should have been protecting me as a child would try to convince me to lay with them, and since I was a child, I was groomed. I didn't know better. I couldn't have known better. I also know that in that same breath, I was judged by it. Most of the time, not even by men, but women like myself. The consequences of that abuse in my life meant that I went through over a decade of having issues with even making friends having issues with the type of relationships that I ended up in because they were all repetitive, abusive situations. I allowed people to take advantage of me because I'll tell you something. The very first time that it happened, I was looking into myself and I wanted to be angry, but I wasn't angry. And I think as a child that confused me because my emotions were so repressed, I thought, okay, if I'm not upset, then it means that this is okay. I didn't have anybody to talk to. I know my mom and my older sister is here, and so um, I just want to say one thing. I remember an interview that I did on television where I was talking about being assaulted, and the first time, that was the first time my mom had heard about it on, on TV. She had no idea why I had started the foundation. Um, but I remember the first time I had a conversation with her about it, it was just a passing, and she was quite upset because she blamed herself 
that she couldn't have known or she couldn't have prevented it. She also shared with me a story of her own and I realized that, but you know what, there are a lot of women like me. Statistically, one in five Ghanaian women would experience some form of sexual assault in their lives. I should have been brave at the time to talk to somebody. I definitely had a, a good background, a good family. I had siblings, four siblings, so I was not alone. But at 12 years old, something I didn't share is that I lost my father on my birthday. It was my 12th birthday. And when... <laughs> so when this happened only a few weeks later, I just felt... Um, I just felt life would certainly <laughs> deal with me. I just knew I wasn't going to have a regular life. I didn't know anybody else my age who was sharing a story like that with me, and so that was very traumatic for me. Every assault, every abuse that happened to me, I justified it because I thought, you know what, I probably deserve this. There was no way that I didn't deserve this, and it was only going to be bad things that would happen to me. The moment everything changed um, for me was when one day um, a girl on Twitter said that uh, she had been assaulted by a guy and that was about the fourth incident that had happened in the span of about two weeks or even less, in about ten days. There were different stories coming from everywhere on Twitter. It's a thread after thread, and all it seemed to be was just, just, oh, somebody has been assaulted. Oh, who is she? Um, what happened? We want to know two sides of the story. And it all just seemed like conversation, but I understood the implication of what that meant for that young girl on all those other young girls, because I knew that they weren't getting justice. I knew that they were suffering. I knew that they were going through it in life. And so I decided that I was going to do something about it on that day. And I think that very action saved my life. That very action is the reason why I, I'm standing here in front of you today and probably... <laughs> um, probably haven't tried to end my life, which is something that I try to do a lot of the times, a, a lot. I would say, because I didn't have any reason to live. I, I thought, hey, you know, one less woman anyway, but I'm standing here with you and I want to give you courage. I know that the woman of valor means um, bravery. When Nanaba, um, my lovely sister Nanaba sent me the invitation, I read, I said woman of valor, hmm. So obviously I knew what the word meant, but I went back to Google and Googled it. Okay, what does valor really mean? And just one word stood out, bravery. As women, as females, the very moment you're born into this earth, every single day of your life is a battle until you die. Emotional, mental, psychological, spiritual, medical, your entire life, you have to prepare yourself for battle. And I call my battle, well, my abuse, um, my rape, I call all of that, my loss, my experience with tragedy, my toxic relationships, and all of the delinquent actions that I really experienced, the addictions, because I spent a lot of time, especially in university, all I tried to do was numb the pain. And so I would get addicted to substances to help me cope, to just help me get through the next day. Now, bravery, for me, it meant facing my own tragedy. It meant recognizing what had happened to me, my pain, my trauma, and know that I can turn that into something, not even for somebody else next, but for me first. I realized that I needed healing because I could spend the rest of my life on this earth 
really reeling in my pain, reeling in my trauma, convincing myself that I deserve where I am, convincing myself that I would not be of worth to myself first. Remember, this is not about somebody else. It's not about worth to a man. It's not about worth to anybody but myself first. And secondly, to my community and to my society, because I didn't want to be looked down by women like me and say, mm, you know, she's mm -mm. maybe because of the dress she's wearing or where you've seen her or what you've seen her do, you instantly judge her. But you don't know where she's coming from. She's never experienced life like you. And sometimes I wish I would look at some of the women that I went to school with and I would cry because I wanted to be like them. I thought, you know, maybe if my dad didn't die, maybe if I wasn't raped, I would be like them. I'd be perfect like them. You know, I would dress the way they are. I would be in the spaces that they are. But I'm not saying that it takes tragedy or trauma or rape or abuse or domestic violence or any of the limitations that as women we experience. I'm not saying those are the things that you need to be brave. I'm not saying those are the things that you need to be a woman of valor. Because I am here and looking at where I've been, where I'm coming from, and where I am now and where I will be going, I know that all it took was courage to face myself and to face those limitations. And so for every woman here, when you go home, when you put your phone away, when you're going to your private space, when you're having your deepest conversations, or in prayer, or on your pillow, when you're in deep thoughts, all the reasons that hold you back, the reasons that happen in your childhood, in your adulthood, in your marriages, in your relationships, the body dysmorphia, the anxiety, the addictions, the type of men that you choose, and women that we choose, because this is not just only about women too. I guess men also do experience abuse. I would say something about that before I end, but most importantly, I want to give all of you courage and bravery to face your own self and your own demons, your own challenges, your own limitations, whatever it might be. I know that for women, we're really, really, really silenced. I was silenced at a very young age by actions of other people, maybe if I had spoken up. I need you to speak up wherever you are. When someone does something to you and you know deep down it's not right, I need you to speak up. Because when you don't, you excuse that. Your brain will try to compensate for that, that thing that happened to you, that thing someone said to you, that thing someone did to you. Always remember that you are more than that. You are of valor, you are of bravery. You don't need to be seated here on the panel to be somebody that's enough. For me, I was enough on the day that I decided that I was gonna do something about my own life and power through. And so I need you to just look into yourselves, power through like I did, and wherever you want to reach in life, you would. Mm -hmm.